Gotha is one of Thuringia's most interesting cities. And today we want to take you on a sightseeing tour through Gotha. And we will explain why Gotha is a city that is definitely worth a visit. We are students from the grammar school Anastinum and some of us want to do research about some sites and buildings and activities in Gotha. And today we want you to get to know Gotha and you can feel free to put questions. So let's get started. Behind us you can see Schloss Friedenstein. It's a castle in the heart of Gotha and one of the most important castles from the 17th century. Castle Grimmstein, its predecessor, was built in the 11th century and finished in 1567. Castle Grimmstein was also destroyed in the Thirty Years' War. Ernest the Pious gave the order to build a new castle on top of the ruins of Castle Grimmstein, which was called Schloss Friedenstein. Castle Friedenstein built over it, including fortifications from its predecessor, like for example, the Kasenach. During the regency of Ernst II from 772 to 1804, former fortifications uh, used to expand on the castle, like an English garden, the Eckhof Theater and the library. Today, the suffix Stein and the word Frieden, Frieden, which means peace in English, stands for the history of the destruction of Castle Grimstein. Now we're inside the castle. Behind us is the research library Gotha. Um, today the castle houses many, many museums, besides other things like the castle museum containing the former living spaces, an art chamber, the coin cabinet with over 130,000 items, the museum of nature, the Eckhoff theater with the oldest baroque stage machinery, the historical museum, the research library Gotha, which is containing books from the old castle library, the research center Gotha, the castle church and the casemates. There are also being a lot of festivals held, um, like for example the baroque festival or the Christmas market. Behind me you can see the entrance to the Echo Theatre. It was founded by Friedrich I of Saxe-Gotha Altenburg. It was built here in the West Tower between 1681 and 1687. And it's the only theatre in the world with functioning stage mechanisms from the 17th century. In the 18th century, important actors, for example Konrad Eckhoff and August Wilhelm Iflan, performed here. It offers 165 seats, but the second tier is not open to the public. Also, every year there's the Echo Festival from at the end of June to the end of August. Now we're standing in front of the water fountain. It was built in 1985 and is an irrigation system and one of the most important sites of Gotha's historical old town. The fountain is decorated with plants and little stages in the pool. But what about its history? Well, back in the 15th century, the amount of inhabitants in Gotha was too high. So there was not enough water available to serve all the inhabitants in Gotha. So the people decided to build the Liner Canal. The Liner Canal is over 30 kilometers long and it serves the city with water. It also used to operate several mills, for example the Bergmühle am Schloss, which used to stand here. In 1890 Hugo Meyrich planned to build a water fountain and the pumping station. And in 1895 the water fountain was inaugurated and now it's one of Gotha's most important sites. The main market is the center of the old town. It's dominated by the building constructed in 1567 after Krumbach's handle as a department store, which served Duke Ernst Pius as his resident during the construction of the Friedenstein Castle. Today, the Renaissance building is the set of the Lord Mayer. About the town hall. The town hall is the red building behind us. The town hall is at the main market. It is 45 meters high. When you are at the top of the town hall, you can see many houses, markets, etc. The opening times are from Monday to Friday from 11 to 18 o'clock. In winter, it's from 11 to 16 o'clock. The town hall was built in 1567. From 1641 to 1646, Duke Ernst the Pius lived there. Today, the Lord Mayer worked here. Now I tell you something about Krumbach. Krumbach was born on the 1st June in 1503 in Rimpach near Würzburg. He was executed on 18 April 1567 when the executor tore the heart out of the chest of the knight Krumbach in the marketplace in Gotha and smashed it into his face with the words See Krumbach your false heart. You saw 
Now we are at the butter market. As the name suggests, the butter market used to be an enchantment point for dairy products and meat. Today, the small dreamy square is lined with cafes and restaurants that reside behind the colorful baroque and renaissance faces. In autumn, the metal design, meaning go to clothes, takes place here. The Peace Kiss Throne is in the middle of the butter market. It was created as part of an art project for Turinga Day 2011. Now we stand on the new market, which was first maintained in 4028. If you stand on the new market, you can nearly catch the smell of a Thuringia sausage being grilled. Completely hidden behind the big church is the Löffler House, where Superintendent Josias Friedrich Löffler opened Germany's first free school in 1800. On the new market are many shops and restaurants. Also, you can find a beautiful water fountain. On the new market are motor shops, bars or ice cafes. With the Quer Street, it built the most important shopping square in Gotha. There you can see the big church on the new market. It's called Church St. Margaret. In the church are many concerts. It was built from 1494 to 1543. It is 16 meters high. The late Baroque Hall Church was largely destroyed during the Second World War and subsequently rebuilt in simple beauty. Gotha's Protestant city church, which also serves as a burial place of the family of Duke Ernst I of Sex Gotha Altenburg, lands itself as a concert venue thanks to its excellent acoustic. As you can see behind us is the orangery, which belongs to the Friedenstein Castle. The orangery was founded in the 18th century and was commissioned by Duke Friedrich IV. The orangery was built between 1747 and 1774, according to plans by Meister Boulder Gottfried Heinrich Grüne with the intention to present exotic plants. Originally, there were four buildings, the orange house, the laurel house and two glass houses. But in 1955, the glass house, which had been damaged during the war, was demolished. Also, a fun fact, this orangery is not only the biggest orangery in Thuringia, but also in the whole German-speaking area. Gotha Orangery is open all year round and seduces its visitors with the fragrance of citrus plants and creatively design baroque style flower beds. Many concerts take place in this gem of garden to forge ahead with the repairs to the orangey building. The building consists of one central pavilion and two side wings. Originally, the orangery was used for overwintering exotic plants, especially orange trees. In the warm months, the plants were taken outside. Today, it's used for cultural events. Now I want to tell something about the history of Gotha. Queen Victoria from Ireland and the UK and Prince Albert from Gotha and saxe coburg married on the 10th February 1840. They had nine children and lived 21 years together in Britain. They visited Gotha regularly and even when Albert died at the age of 42, Victoria didn't stop visiting Gotha. I feel so at home here, she wrote in a diary in 1845. Many of their descendants populated the European royal houses. So as you can see, we are at the beginning of the English Garden. The English Garden is a popular travel goal and a green oasis in the city. It was founded in the 19th century and it offers many attractions as well as activities for all ages. Here you can find also beautiful flower beds, many cold lawns and even scenic walks. There is also a pond which invites guests to relax, to have a picnic or just to enjoy the nature. There are also historic buildings like the Friedenstein Castle or the Doric Temple, which both have a really impressive architecture. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now you already know a lot about Gotha's history, and now we want to come up with some free time activities you can do in Gotha. The first thing is the Burger Turm. The Burger Turm is an observation deck located at the Gallberg. It was built in 2009 and it is the successor of the Arnoldi Turm. If you're interested in being active, you can take a hike to the Burger Turm and when you're on top of the observation deck, you will have a beautiful view over Gotha and its surrounding area. 
And if you're hungry after your walk, you can go to the restaurant Berggarten where yummy dishes are served. We also have a swimming pool in Gotha. It's in the northern part of Gotha's old town. It was opened in 1909 and was restored in 2017. But today you can find some old parts of the old swimming pool in the hot pool. Then we have a big pool and a children's pool and by the big pool there are also diving platforms. The swimming pool also got some architecture awards. The next thing is Gotha Cinema History. Back then we had a cinema in Gotha's Arts and Leisure Center. In 1993 the Capitol opened, which was a cinema as well, but sadly it closed in 2014. Now we have the cinema which is called Cineplex and it's really liked and teenagers enjoy to watch films there. In Gotha we also have a big library, the Library Heinrich Heine. The library is named after Heinrich Heine who was a poet and an author back then. We have 110,000 visitors per year and next to the normal library we also have a children's library. There's also a cafe when, where you get, can get a coffee or maybe some small foods and it's a good place for research, for example for the Seminarfacharbeit or some other scientific work. So, but let's talk about a festival, the Gotardus Festival. Gotardus was a patron saint which is known since the 13th century and the people in Gotha really liked him and that's why he's also part of Gotha's coat of arms and the people decided to host a festival named after him, the Gotardus Festival. The Gotardus Festival takes place in May every year and it's a street food festival with musical acts, fireworks and a big wheel and it has about 150,000 visitors per year and that's why it's a really like festival in Gotha. We also have a small zoo where 130 different kinds of animals live, for example monkeys or tigers. There you can take a coach ride, you can feed animals, for example the goats in the goat cage. There's a small restaurant where you can get some drinks or uh, some food and the zoo is placed near the Seeberg and was opened in 1929. So now we're in front of uh, one of the most significant buildings in Gotha, the Duco Museum. It was built from 1864 to 1879 on the foot of the Friedenstein Castle. It's built in an elegant, ornate neo-Renaissance style and was reopened in 2013. It offers a fine collection of old German and Dutch masters like Lukas Kranach the Elder and Caspar David Friedrich. You can also see a lot of uh, paintings by young adults uh, in the Eva Maria Dickens Prize exhibition, which I prefer because the painters are people in my age. The museum has uh, like three floors. In the first floor uh, there are a lot of uh, Chinese and Japanese exhibitions. Uh, you can look at still lives and a lot of Netherlandish and Flemish paintings but also German paintings. There is the porcelain and stoneware exhibition and a fan gallery, which I think is pretty interesting. In the basement of the museum, there is the Egyptian collection and also uh, antique vases you can look at and the death in antiquity exhibition. But also the cork models, which are basically uh, really cool buildings that are just uh, formed in cork style. In the lower floor, there is the columned hall where you can look at temporary exhibitions and also the sculpture hall. So now we're in front of mo one of the most well-known paintings in Gotha. The double portrait that was created in the late Middle Ages around 1480, the Gotha Lovers. It was the first large format double portrait in German panel painting and is depicting a secular non-liturgical scene. The painter was Albrecht Dürer. So as you can see, the picture shows a woman and a man and on top of them there are two banners. The banner on the right side of the picture, so on top of the woman, says I'm translated to English. She who tied the lace for you likes you very much. The banner on, on the left side of the picture, so on, so on top of the man, says, and rightly she did it, which is why I let her farewell. So um, the banners basically tell the love story of the two people here. So now we're in front of one of the stolen paintings, um, the five old master paintings that were stolen on 14th December in 1979. Since December uh, in 2019 the paintings reappeared and were first secured in the State Museum of Berlin. The five paintings were stolen during GDR era and since 2020 they're on public display again. It's considered the most famous uh, art robbery in the history of German Demo Democratic Republic and is the most spectacular robbery in the post-war of German. 
So the robbery during the GDR era was about 5 million mark and the paintings are now um, sold for up to 20 million euros. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope that we were able to give you a good idea of the city Gotha and what it has to offer. It is definitely a place that is always worth a second visit and we hope to see you again in our residential city. Are there any un unanswered questions? Then now I'd like to introduce you to our project group.